Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On this show, we are looking at the brand new Jetson Aura Nano Developer Kit. That's a pretty elegant looking box. Looks like they've put some thought into the packaging here. The shipping tape has a tab to pull on. That makes it easy to get into the box. There's a nice little pictogram. On the right side, we have the Jetson. This is a pretty fancy little box. There's some padding for the Jetson. Let's take a look at the other side. Here's a little instruction manual. And then underneath that, we have the power brick. Come out of there, you little pig dog. And then we have the power cable. Let's grab the Jetson Aura Nano. The instruction manual is a getting started pamphlet. It describes how to get started with the dev kit, and there's a diagram of the board with all of the connectors. The developer kit consists of three main parts. The plastic base holds the antennas and provides clearance for the underside of the board. The Jetson carrier board holds the Jetson module and provides I.O. connectors. And the Jetson module holds the Jetson Aura Nano compute and memory elements. Let's remove the Jetson module and take a look underneath it. There are two screws that hold the module in place. Let's remove the screws. I hide the screws from the vacuum cleaner by putting them in this little cup. Next, disconnect the fan from the carrier board. It is a stubborn connector next to the sharp pins of the GPIO header. I found that the only way to remove it is to swear profusely. I won't show you that on camera. It's a trade secret. Now, release the springs holding the Jetson module in place. It pops up a little bit and we can pull it out. Let's talk about the Jetson Orn Nano module first. Here is a top-down image of the Jetson Orn module without the fan heatsink. This is a system on module, or SOM for short. The Jetson Orn Nano module is available in two flavors. The first is the development kit version, which we are looking at in this video. The second is the production version. The production module is a little bit different and is meant for use in products. One of the major differences is that the dev kit uses a micro SD card for external storage. At the heart of the module is the Tegra Orin system on a chip. The idea behind a SOC is that by adding some external memory and some simple glue chips, you end up with a complete working computer. By integrating all of the compute functions into this one chip, you get much better performance and energy efficiency. The Jetsons are special in that a large number of programmable CUDA GPU cores are present on the Tegra chip. The connector on the bottom of the module is a 260-pin SODIMM connector. This is the connector which mates with the carrier board. The module is 45 by 69.6 millimeters, about the size of a credit card. The CPU has six cores and utilizes the 64-bit Cortex-A78 ARM architecture, version 8.2. The chip incorporates 1.5 megabytes of L2 cache and 4 megabytes of L3 cache memory. The GPU utilizes an NVIDIA Ampere architecture. There are 1,024 CUDA cores, along with 32 third generation Tensor cores. For main memory, we have 8 gigabytes of low power DDR5. It has about 25% faster transfer speeds than the previous generation LP DDR4X. The Orin Nano runs in two power profiles, 7 watt and 15 watt. When operating in 15 watt mode, the Orin Nano achieves a performance of 40 tops. There are also hardware video decoders. However, the Orin Nano does not have hardware video encoders. This must be done on the CPU. Let's look at the underside of the module. The cross brace spring in the middle holds onto the thermal solution on the other side of the board. You can see the micro SD card reader. It is ultra high speed, level one. Now let's take a look at the carrier board. Top side first. The Jetson Aura Nano module has been removed. There are two MIPI CSI2 camera connectors, eight by two lanes. The connectors are 22 pins. 
That means that you will need a cable adapter if you're using a 15-pin interface. Next, we have the 12-pin button header. This header brings out system power, reset, UART console, and force recovery related signals. Notice here that we have an unpopulated area of the board, which appears to be ready for installation of a CAN bus header. Next, we have a 40-pin GPIO header. It's in a Raspberry Pi layout. It provides an interface to UARTs, SPI, I2S, I2C, and GPIO. Then we have the main connectors, 19 volt power input. It's a barrel jack. Then we have a display port connector, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 connectors, gigabit ethernet, finally USB type C. It's an upstream facing port. Let's look at it from another angle. Left to right, power jack, display port, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 connections, an ethernet connector, and USB-C. Let's flip back to our other view. There are four holes for mounting the carrier board. That's typically where you mount your dev kit to your project. The dimensions of the dev kit are 103 by 90.5 by 35 millimeters. The carrier board with the Jetson module is 100 by 79 by 31 millimeters, and it weighs 176 grams or so. Let's flip it over. On the underside of the board, there is a M.2 key E slot. It has a wireless card pre-installed. Then we have a M.2 key M slot. It's 2242. The 42 indicates that the board is 42 millimeters. Two lanes PCIe. Then we have a M.2 key M slot. It's at 2280. This one's four lanes PCIe. All of the key M slots are Gen 3. The plastic base holds the antennas for the wireless card. On the software side, we have Jetpack 5.1.1. At this point, the amount of available software for the Jetson is almost too much to list. However, the usual suspects are here. Jetson Linux 35.3, CUDNN, TensorRT, DeepStream, Isaac SDK, and OpenCV. The list goes on. Off to demo land. Let's fire up JTOP. We can see we have six CPU cores. We're running L4T 35.3.0. Switch over to the info tab. JTOP doesn't know about the Orin Nano developer kit yet, but you can see which versions of the libraries are loaded. And we see that we are running a 5.10 Linux kernel. Let's run the deep learning benchmarks NVIDIA provides. I'll use these numbers for the article on Jetson Hacks. This demo takes about 35 minutes to run. Watch the GPU bar. We use as much as we can get a hold of. This is sped up, of course. And there's our final numbers. The numbers are surprisingly close to those on the AGX Orin Developer Kit when it emulates an Orin Nano. As you know, I'm not a fan of benchmarks. With that said, here's the Geekbench CPU score. Let's run the Transformer PeopleNet demo. Transformers are all the rage right now. The PeopleNet Transformer model is based on the deformable DETR object detector with ResNet50 as a feature extractor. On a AGX Orin, this runs about 30 frames per second. Here on the Nano, we're running a little bit under eight. If you don't need real-time performance, this is a pretty good option. Man, the GPU is just cranked. Well over 90%. Let's look at another demo. I haven't really had time to play with this much yet. The idea is intriguing. We can use the Omniverse Replicator in Isaac Sim to create synthetic data of scenes, objects, and people which is already annotated. This data can be used to retrain a people segmentation model and optimize it using NVIDIA Tau Toolkit. Once the model is trained, we can transfer it over to the Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit to see the inferencing results. The advantage of this is that you do not have to annotate every image. It's all generated by the Omniverse model. Way cool. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up.
And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.